I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume that we've all had that moment where we're just playing a game and the soundtrack happens to be so catchy, we'll sit there and play along with the music, sometimes while making progression at the same time. That is where Hi-Fi Rush comes in. This colorful, highly energetic, and over-the-top experience takes the rhythm and hacking slash genre and combines them into a magnificent gem that you shouldn't skip out on if you have the means to play it. It's like Devil May Cry and a series of music titles were slapped with a polymerization card while taking an art style similar to that of Jet Set Radio which is perfect for a title like this. This game was developed by Tango Gameworks which is led by Shinji Mikami who up to this point has an impressive roster of well-known horror games like Resident Evil and Evil Within. But along with that library of horror titles, he also has delved into action-based ones like God Hand, Vanquish, Beautiful Joe, and of course, Devil May Cry. So with a history of games like that under his belt, you can see why he would be able to construct the game that we are covering in this video. The story for Hi-Fi Rush starts off with an enthusiastic man by the name of Chai with big dreams of becoming a rock star. The problem is, however, Chai's arm is disabled which prevents him from being able to play a guitar. So to fix this problem, he makes his way over to the Vandalay Corporation and volunteers as a test subject for a program involving cybernetic surgery, which involves replacing the limbs with robotic parts. However, the CEO, Kale Vandalay, had other plans for Chai as he was planning to turn him into a garbage collector for the company and instead he was going to give Chai robotic arm that was designed for picking up trash. The surgery goes wrong as Chai's music player was accidentally embedded into his chest no thanks to the neglectful CEO, granting him with the ability to sense the rhythm of the world and even powered up his arm to have magnetic capabilities. <laughs> you could say that groove is in the heart. No. Stop. He was then labeled as a defect shortly after and had been pursued by Vandalay's robotic security since then. But Chai wasn't going to break down that easily as his new arm allowed him to assemble varying parts in order to create a guitar-like weapon. This allowed our hero to perform his solo while delivering his new hit single on his pursuers, bringing on a whole new meaning of a headbanger. Chai later on meets up with this robotic cat by the name of 808 and receives help from an unknown ally who calls herself Peppermint, and this ally helps Chai escape. Once he was guided to her hideout, the two of them work together to uncover a horrible secret Vandalay is keeping backstage. It turns out there's an AI program by the name of Spectra, whose sole purpose is to use Vandalay's cybernetic implants as a method to hijack the minds of those who use them and bend the civilians to the company's will. So now Chai, Peppermint, and several others form a band to defeat all of Vandalay's top executives and end Spectra's live performance for good. The story itself is simplistic, seeing an evil corporation doing bad things and we have to go and stop them. But both the heroes, villains, their interactions, and the cinematics is what makes the story highly enjoyable. All of the characters have great chemistry with each other, and their unique personalities allow them to set up for some pretty funny moments and some tense interactions with each other when the story really calls for it. I haven't felt the need to skip any of the cutscenes the entire time I was playing because I was invested in what was going to happen next and cared about how everything was going to unfold. And yes, before you ask, that is indeed a JoJo reference. As I stated earlier, Hi-Fi Rush is indeed a hack and slash with a rhythm element mixed in. The game has all the works you'd expect to see in a hack and slash, such as a light attack, a heavy attack, a variety of combos you can pull off, and a meter of some sort that is used for special abilities. If you've played games like Devil May Cry, Metal Gear Rising, or Bayonetta, you're definitely going to feel right at home here. However, the rhythm element is what gives Hi-Fi Rush that unique edge which separates this game from the others. Players have to feel the beat of the music and do all almost everything to the BPM in order to get the best result, and while that task may sound daunting at first, I can assure you that it is actually very easy for players of all skill levels to pick it up and have a blast while doing so. This
This is mainly due to the fact that the entire game is in sync with the BPM for each song. And for those who do not know what that means, it is an abbreviation for beats per minute. It's a measurement for the number of beats occurring every 60 seconds. Now, when I say that the entire game is in sync with the current track that is playing, I really do mean that. You'll find that the environment Chai runs around in will pulse, move, or bounce to the rhythm of the music, not only making these stages feel very lively, but they can also help you get into the groove while you're trying to time your actions to the beats themselves. It's not just the stage environments that will do this. Chai's footsteps will always be in sync with the rhythm, and even his idle animation will do the same thing. Your health bar also pulses to the beat, serving as yet another indicator to help the player out as much as possible when trying to figure out how they can follow the beat of the music. Furthermore, this game also has several indicators to let the player know when they're timing their actions properly, such as the audience letting out a small cheer every time you're successful, or certain areas of the stage lighting up when your inputs are in sync. These are all the elements you can find in other rhythm games like DJ Max, Beat Mania, or Scytus just to give you some examples. And just in case none of these indicators are enough to inform you of your proper timing, the developers included a rhythm gauge which can be displayed at the bottom by holding down the equivalent of the select button. I do love it when developers go out of their way to include enough visual cues to help new players adjust to games like this without it feeling like the game is constantly holding your hand. However, all of this won't mean a thing if the controls are not on point. That's why it brings me joy to tell you that the controls are top notch. Chai moves around with the left analog stick while you're controlling the camera with the right. The X button is for your light attacks, Y is for your heavies, B allows you to parry once you've learned the ability, and A allows you to jump. The left bumper will activate Chai's grappling hook which can be used to hook himself onto certain objects and pull himself towards enemies, very much like a certain devil hunter that I know of, while the right bumper will allow him to dodge. Chai can also dodge up to three times but only if you time your dodges to the beat of the music. Chai himself handles pretty well all things considered. He's always responsive to the player input, and his movement doesn't feel clunky either, which is very important when you consider the game's combat flow, the fact that it does have some puzzle solving and platform segments here and there, on top of it being rhythm based. So you can rest easy knowing that when it comes to the control setup, you're in good hands. But now, let's focus on the game's combat system. If you play games like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, you're going to be very familiar with the game's combat flow as it is indeed pretty similar to those two. The biggest difference, however, is that Chai's attacks will be in sync with the music, and the same rule is also going to be applied to the enemies. Even if you were to try an attack while being off sync on purpose, Chai will briefly wind up his attack until it is in sync before swinging at his foes. His light attacks are fast and does its job in making sure you get the first jump on your enemies before they do, while his heavier attacks are slower and less combo oriented, but they will deal more damage as a result. Chai also has several attacks that can launch enemies into the air and can be followed up with air combos which can be continued on the ground if they're still breathing. Each hit can also have its damage amplified if the player times their inputs with the beat of the music. So while you can get away with mashing, the game will reward you if you learn how to fight with the rhythm. Chai can also perform these heavy hitting combo finishers known as beat hits. A ring will appear in the center of the screen with a larger one closing in on it. If the player can time their next input in sync with the rings or listening to the beat countdown, it will amplify Chai's damage output on his finisher and even increase its area effect so he can hit surrounding enemies. Chai's combos can also be expanded upon when a player purchases them from the shop, but I will get into more of that later on. Along with these combos and finishers that Chai can pull off, he also has access to special attacks and partner finishers which can only be done if Chai has enough reverb meter to do it. You see this orange gauge on top of Chai's health? That is your reverb meter. Anytime Chai has enough filled up, mainly by bashing enemies with his guitar or collecting these red batteries, the player can hit both the L3 and R3 buttons to trigger his specials, which can either be a devastating attack or a resource to be used to heal himself. You also need to have enough reverb meter to pull off the finishers with your partners which can be activated by hitting the right trigger at the end of your combo instead of using your light or heavy attack buttons. These tag team finishers are not only flashy, but they can also get the job done and potentially have an additional effect depending on which one is used. Before you can use these partner finishers and other varying specials however, you need to purchase them from the shop and make sure they are equipped. Chai also has access to his grappling hook which is primarily used to pull 
pull yourself towards enemies as I've mentioned earlier, and it's perfect for catching foes who like to keep away from you or quickly closing the gap on airborne enemies. Just be careful with who you're trying to latch on as some enemies will react to that and punish you as a result. Then there is the game's parrying system. Anytime enemies are about to strike you, pressing the B button will allow Chai to enter a defensive stance, but only for a quick second. Parrying is a very effective way to not only mitigate any incoming damage, but it can also be used to stun enemies or repel their projectiles right back at them. You can even use parrying to completely negate any incoming damage from stage obstacles, which I've definitely made full use of throughout my playthrough. However, this is not the only form of parrying you should be aware of. During your fights, you will encounter enemies that can trigger a desperation attack against you and will put you into a mini game where you must parry or dodge their attacks according to the enemies attack strength. If you are successful, you will then need to follow up with a well-timed input which would finish your enemy off, whereas if you fail to time your input at the end, the enemy will live longer but they'll at least remain stunned for a bit. Fail the entire minigame and you will be taking a lot of damage depending on who you are fighting against. Finally, we have the enemies themselves. First, let me start by saying that the game is filled with plenty of enemy variety to go around, so players will not have to worry about the enemies becoming stale over time due to fighting the same robo goons over and over again. Again, which is a common issue a lot of these games tend to suffer from. Furthermore, the enemies themselves are also in sync with the music and will only attack you to the beat. So if you're trying to learn how the enemy will come after you, just listen to the rhythm of the music, keep your eyes on your foe, listen to those unique audio cues the enemies will provide and react accordingly. I will advise that you focus only on dodging them first before trying to parry their attacks as the enemies can easily trip you up if you don't know what to expect from their attack patterns. The entire time you're fighting, you will have a ranking system that will ascend or descend depending on how well you're doing. If your combos are stylish, very good at parrying, timing all of your movement to the beat including your dodges, and if you're able to avoid taking damage, getting up to an S rank will be no problem for you. And just like in Devil May Cry, certain elements in the music will become more pronounced and you'll even have an audience hyping you up as they'll cheer Chai's name once you've reached that point. You'll then be graded once the mob has been fully cleared out, and depending on how well you do, you'll even get a bonus amount of gear pieces which can be used later on to purchase some items at the shop. I have to say the way the combat is structured is enough to keep players on their toes at all times while trying to remain in rhythm with the music. I know that it all sounds hectic, but I can assure you that it is all very simple to pick up. Plus, with the different varying enemies and the abilities Chai has under his arsenal with catchy tunes to boot, there is never a dull moment out here on the main stage. Finally, let's talk about those boss battles. Just like the grunts, the bosses will also keep in sync with the rhythm, and what's really cool about them is that they all have movement and varying attacks that will line up perfectly with their themes. <laughs> Each of these battles are not only challenging, but they are also over the top, visually appealing, and perfectly fall into place with the game's main selling point, which is to be a rhythm fighter. My personal favorite is, well, all of them. I can't really tell you which ones I had the least amount of enjoyment as they all provide a fun, unique experience in their own way. None of them were too easy, nor were they too hard, and even if you come across a moment where you're likely to get wrecked, you'll be able to figure out exactly what it is you need to do if you slow down, take note of your surroundings, and how these fights will constantly morph to the new situation. Get Rekka angry and you pay the 
surprise. Unk. All in all, the bosses are very entertaining and I cannot tell you a single time where I was bored fighting against any of them. Now I have brought this up several times already, but when it comes to upgrading Chai's abilities, the shop is going to be your best friend. You will be able to acquire all kinds of useful stuff like new attacks, specials, partner support, passive items like these chips which can increase certain characteristics on Chai himself, letting you customize a character to your playstyle, and items that can increase Chai's overall health and his reverb gauge. The shop for the most part has it all, though it should be noted that all of these options won't be open to you from the gate as you'll unlock more of these features while you're progressing the story. The game also comes with a training room where you may practice your new moves and builds once you've equipped them, and you're able to change the enemies you face along with their behavior like you would when you're practicing an actual fighting game. This makes it the perfect environment to test your builds or create scenarios you may struggle against, especially when you're trying to master the game yourself. Now when it comes to the overall flow of the game, Hi-Fi Rush does a fantastic job with its level design, having a steady pace of both combat and exploration. When I wasn't using Vandalay security robots as a new set of drums, I was taking my time exploring these levels and losing myself in the stage's environment, which I've stated earlier will jam to the music. Sometimes I'll just sit there and admire these little details that are sprinkled everywhere, as I greatly appreciate the amount of effort that was put in to really give you that sense that you're on a musical romp. Also, exploring these stages are heavily encouraged as you can find all kinds of hidden goodies that can upgrade Chai's health and reverb gauge just like the items you can acquire at the shop. I also wouldn't worry about areas you cannot explore yet as you'll be able to access them later on once you have the means of doing so. The platforming and puzzles the game throws at you are not going to scramble your brain too hard either as each of them are rather simplistic and will only take a few seconds to figure out. Best part is, the pacing between these platforming sections and the combat segments are well balanced, so it doesn't feel like there's an oversaturation of either. My personal favorite happens to be Mimosa's level, not only because I really dig those stage visuals, but I cannot get enough of those jazzy tunes I hear throughout the entire stage. Also, if there's ever a moment you're feeling lost, just follow the arrows as they will always point you in the right direction. And if you happen to pay close attention to some of these signs, sometimes they can even lead you to some secrets where you may find more collectibles. This game really is a gift that keeps on giving. All right, now let's talk about that art style. The art direction they chose for Hi-Fi Rush is absolutely perfect for a game like this. I have always loved the cell shaded visuals used in older titles like Jet Set Radio, Beautiful Joe, and Tales of Symphonia, and Hi-Fi Rush managed to take that style and push it to new heights. The visuals make it feel like you're playing an actual comic book, and this approach combined with the active environments truly bring this game to life. All of the characters as well as the enemies are very expressive during both gameplay and its cutscenes, and there was definitely a number of times where the game did manage to get a good chuckle out of me. And of course, I can't talk about a game where rhythm is the main component without talking about the game's soundtrack. Seeing as how the game is mostly centered around a self-proclaimed rock star, it should come to no surprise when I tell you that the game will mostly consist of rock music. Now there are traces of other genres such as EDM, jazz, and a touch of classical to name a few in order to fit the themes that these stages are going for. But know that rock is indeed the centerpiece of it all. As you are playing through the game, you will definitely hear some familiar songs from highly recognizable artists like Nine Inch Nails or The Black Keys just to name some examples. Now. For those who are like me and want to make content for this game or stream it, you're probably thinking you're going to have to deal with copyright issues due to the game's music. However, you will be happy to know that the developers have already had this concern in mind and hooked us up with a streamer mode which can be toggled in the options menu. As the name implies, you will be able to play through the game with all of these licensed songs replaced without the need of having to deal with a copyright issue. And don't worry, we didn't get the short end of the stick either when it came to the non-licensed soundtrack. Shuichi Bori has our backs with this one, and for those who are unfamiliar with his work, he is the same music composer behind games like Metal Gear Solid 3 and The Evil Within. And if you still don't believe we're in good hands, why don't you go on ahead and listen for yourself? Your price is binding my bond is yours for through echoes of laughter I see 
I do appreciate the licensed music that plays when the streamer mode is off, but these original tracks, in my personal opinion, adds a unique feel to the game, and all of them are absolute bangers. Now the only thing I can see players having an issue with when it comes to their experience of Hi-Fi Rush is a lack of a lock-on function, which is usually a staple element to have in combat-oriented games like these. The game uses an auto lock-on system with the camera as it will keep its view on the enemy you're focusing on at all times. Even when the enemy you want to fight is far away from you, I had no problems using my grappling hook to catch up to them despite the fact that I am generally surrounded by a lot of grunts at the same time, which I have to say is very important impressive. What is also surprising is that the lock-on system does a fantastic job on its own, and it is designed this way so players can focus on keeping up with the rhythm, avoiding damage, and fighting accordingly. For this game in particular, it works. Still, despite its reasoning to leave it out, there are moments where I do end up swinging at the wrong foe and can throw me off my rhythm at times. It does not happen very often, thankfully, and it's not a huge detriment to the experience as a whole. However, I still say that there at least should be an option to toggle a lock-on function or not, and leave it entirely up to player preference. Hi-Fi Rush turned out to be a game that is well worth the hype it has been getting since it came out. Despite the fact that this game was shadow release, it managed to explode in popularity despite not having any ads or publicity surrounding the title. And after playing this game myself, it's not hard to see why. Now it is a Microsoft exclusive, so you will only be able to acquire it on Xbox and Steam, assuming you have a good PC. The the best part about this whole thing, however, is that we have a high quality game that is only going for $30, and it can't get any better than that. So, if you have the means to play this game, treat yourself to this title, the game is definitely worth every penny. You got a killer track? Fail. But every song's gotta end. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you like what you saw, hit me with that siggity sub and check out my other videos while you're here. I hope to see y'all in the next one. Later! Ooh, pretty rockstar move, Chai.